He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. So let's try some questions regarding molecular geometry. The first one asks, which of the following molecules has a linear geometry? We've got four options there. Then the second one asks, which compound does not possess a dipole moment? So we've got four options there. The third asks, what is the hybridization of sulfur in sulfur dioxide? And we've got four different hybridizations there. And the fourth asks, which compound does not possess a dipole moment? Just like number two, but we've got four different options here. And so there's a lot here. We want to know about geometry. We want to know about hybridization. We want to know about polarity, which depends on geometry. So if this seems unclear, check out my tutorial on Vesper theory, which covers all of this. And uh, when you're ready, give it a try. So taking a look at this first question, we've got four molecules. We want to know which one has a linear geometry. So looking at the central atom in each of these examples, carbon has four valence electrons. Nitrogen has five, sulfur has six, and chlorine has seven. So that is going to be very important here because we're going to have to draw the Lewis dot structures here in order to be able to figure out what the geometries are. So for carbon dioxide, we know that carbon has four valence electrons, so it's going to have to make two double bonds. So CO2 looks like this. Then let's draw NO2. So nitrogen has five valence electrons, so we're looking at one single bond and one double bond, leaving a lone pair. So nitrogen has three electron domains here. Then sulfur, with its six valence electrons, that is going to make two double bonds and have a lone pair left over. And then ClO2, we're looking at this situation where chlorine has a double bond to one oxygen and a single bond to another oxygen, and then we've got two lone pairs on the chlorine. So these are the geometries that we're looking at, and they all have, we have some different hybridizations here, but it is very clear that CO2 is the only one with a linear geometry, and that is because carbon has no lone pairs. It just has two electron domains. It, is, it has the two oxygen atoms, so it is sp hybridized, which means a linear geometry. Now the second question asks, which compound does not possess a dipole moment? And we've got four options here. So we do need to know what these mean, and it may not be immediately clear. Um, so let's go ahead and draw these structures out. We've got methyl chloride. And so methyl chloride, if uh, methyl means CH3. So this, this molecule has a few different names. We could call it chloromethane. We can call it methyl chloride. It's all just referring to CH3Cl. So these are all essentially derivatives of methane. We're just replacing hydrogen atoms with chlorine. So methyl chloride looks like this. Methylene chloride happens to mean CH2Cl2. So we're taking methyl chloride and we're replacing another hydrogen with another chlorine atom. So that's what that looks like. And then chloroform just means CHCl3. So we're replacing yet another hydrogen atom with another chlorine atom. That looks like that. And then carbon tetrachloride. Uh, so tetra means four. And so now we've replaced all four hydrogens. So we have CCl4. So that's what these four molecules look like. We're just replacing hydrogen atoms on methane with more and more chlorine atoms. And so now to figure out which one does not possess a dipole moment, we have to understand that carbon-chlorine bonds are polar. So chlorine is fairly electronegative, so that carbon-chlorine covalent bond is polarized. And so with methyl chloride, we do have a dipole moment and it's pointing at the chlorine atom. With methylene chloride, we still have a dipole because we do have two polar bonds and they're pointing roughly in the same direction. So we could make a net dipole that points towards the chlorine atoms. Then even for chloroform, we're splitting up that, that dipole moment where, where we have three different polar bonds. So the net dipole has to take into account all of those polar bonds, but we are still sort of pointing in one direction for the molecule. 
only once we get to carbon tetrachloride do we have four CCL bonds that perfectly cancel each other out. The way the geometric arrangement of the molecule, it is perfectly tetrahedral. All of those bond dipoles cancel out one another to give us a net dipole of zero. So the geometry here has negated the polarity of those bonds, and carbon tetrachloride actually does not possess a dipole moment. Now for the third question, we're looking at sulfur dioxide, and we want to know the hybridization of sulfur. And so let's take a look at the Lewis dot structure. Once again, we already looked at this in the first question. Sulfur has six valence electrons, so it is going to make two double bonds, one to each oxygen, and then have a lone pair left over. So that is the Lewis dot structure for SO2. And now what we need to understand is we have to count up the electron domains. So we have two atoms, those are the two oxygens, and then we have one lone pair. So those all count as electron domains, which means we have three electron domains total. And if we have three electron domains, that means that sulfur is sp2 hybridized. And lastly, once again, we're asking which compound does not possess a dipole moment. So we're going to want to draw all of these Lewis dot structures. So let's once again count up the valence electrons. Carbon has four, boron has three, nitrogen has five, and chlorine has seven. So bearing that in mind, these are the relevant Lewis dot structures. So we have methylene chloride, we have BF3, we have NF3, and we have ClO2. And so we want to know which does not possess a dipole moment. And we can see that there is only one molecule that is completely symmetrical, and that is BF3. So those boron-fluorine bonds are polar, but the precise trigonal planar orientation of those atoms means that those bond dipoles cancel each other out, and we have a net dipole of zero. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.